This is Tom Tolles. You're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. And you're doing it without your head. Think about it. Oh, wait, you can't. You don't have a head. (laughs) Oh, man, I went too far again. Welcome to the Station of Decapitation Without Your Head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by Russell Jeffrey Banks. He's of a lot of films, but we're going to be talking about who's watching Oliver. How you doing? Um, yeah, no, I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? You good? I'm pretty good, thank you. You're, uh, I don't know if you're, if you're allowed to say, I assume you are, unless you're there in like a secret business or something, but you're, you're in Bangkok right now. Yeah. No, I'm based in Bangkok, so yeah, no, I'm here for... Oh, I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah, that's... I've been, uh, back and forward over the last 10 years, so, yeah. What, what brought you to, uh, Thailand? Um... Originally, I just came out here, like, backpacking back in the day. Uh-huh. And then uh, met people who were doing film. Um, got on originally just doing standing and jobs like that. So then I got on films. And then uh, came back and started coming back and forward. Mm. Hmm. So is it like a American movies or, or, or Thai movies? Or? Yeah, no, like, America. So originally, because um, I... First of all, I, I didn't study. Uh, I went back and studied when I was older, but I couldn't afford drama school and that. Um, so I was out here, and uh, then the first film I did stand in on was Street Fighter Two: Legends of Chun Li, uh-huh. which uh, came out of nowhere really. And then uh, did Hangover, um, Nomads, the Ridley Scott thing, um, Shanghai with John Cusack. So, yeah, it was great. Just, uh, it was like, um, and everybody, all the Thai crew, and that was amazing. People and the other actors, they were teaching me stuff. And then after that, I went back and re-studied, like, went back and studied. But I started getting parts out here. So, uh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, actually, I know Thai food is good. My aunt is uh, from Thailand. Uh, My uncle married her when he was stationed uh, out there in the 70s. And, uh, I always enjoyed her food. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's nice. The food's nice. It's a bit spicy sometimes for me. Sure. I'm a, I'm a bit of a pussy with chili. But, uh, uh-huh. no, it's nice. Can be nice. Yeah. Mm. So you went from, uh, like, doing stand-ins. So did you have any inspiration before that to, to get into acting? I know you said you couldn't, like, afford drama school and everything, but it wasn't um, ever something you wanted to do? Yeah, no, completely. I always wanted to do uh, either acting or filmmaking, one of the two. Um, I just, at first, in my uh, teens, I didn't didn't have enough uh, guts to go and do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was something which I always wanted to do. I left school at 15 and went out, and then I worked uh, a load of shit jobs, which I didn't like. Mm-hmm. Um always wanting to do acting or something to do with film because I was always fascinated with film um, growing up it was uh, yeah really the only thing which I was that into was watching films and uh, mm-hmm. I always knew that some I wanted to do something on it it just seemed a million miles away do you know yeah, mm. yeah that your life could act uh, that whole thing could actually be a movie like uh, you left school, you went backpacking, and then you kind of dropped in the movie. What kind of movies did you did you like, uh, or was it just all kinds? Um, growing up, all oh, everything, really, uh, really everything. Um, yeah, I could, I still can. I still like can sit and watch anything. It t- it has to be really fucking bad for me to turn <laughs> off a film anyway. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, growing up. Uh, yeah, different. My dad used to watch a lot of the old black and white, like James Cagney films and Bogart and that. So I used to watch a lot of them. Um, my mum, she'd watch like fucking Dirty Dancing, Hayley Mills films and that. Uh-huh. I'd stay up and watch the old horror films. Um, yeah, just, and then, you know, I'm 80s, so fuck, we had amazing films like Cry Kid, Top Gun, all that type of stuff. So Labyrinth, Gremlins. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, bit oh, of everything. Definitely. Yeah, bit of, bit of everything. Mm-hmm. So, so when you do, when did you just decide to start taking the lessons to like 
you know, instead of just being a stand in or an extra and stuff to, you know, pursue uh, more um, of a career. But as soon as I, as soon as I started doing the stand in, I never knew what a stand in was before. It was just a, I wanted to, uh, read, like, I was still trying to get on set to do acting then. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was some, a job which then what just allowed me to get onto a set. Um, I started doing lessons in between. Uh, when I started to get some money, I started to do some lessons back in England. And then, uh, like, years later, I went and studied, like, at the Method Acting Centre and with different teachers. And over here, there was a few teachers which uh, I, I felt it a few back and forward a little bit with. Um, but, yeah, no, when I started to do the stand-in, that's when when I started to believe in it a little bit more that I could do something. Um, yeah, just being on the first film, and everybody was so nice to me. Um, mm-hmm. They, You know, people who understood that I was into film, um, and meeting different people, like uh, like on Street Fighter 2, Neil McDonough, I was doing the stand-in for Bison. He, he was amazing. Um, Michael Clark Duncan, uh, God rest his soul, but he was really like nice everybody was super nice um back then i used to have re- really bad stage fright so that was i think that was the big hurdle was always stage fright mm-hmm. yeah i've actually heard other actors say that and uh how do you get over that or some people i've actually heard say kind of like if you have stage fright in a way if you become another person then when you're acting you kind of get over it is there anything like that yeah yes, uh that to a degree, um, mm. I still I'm not I still hate public speaking. Mm. Um, not really, although it, it's funny because I've done some jobs doing public speaking, but yeah, I hate it. I uh, I'm not not really don't enjoy standing up and talking if it's <laughs> one and one or, and it, it's a weird thing because just uh, a week ago I was on a Thai TV show. Mm-hmm. And there was a big audience of people. So I thought, oh, fuck, this might be a bit. But it was fine because I was just speaking to the one person. Mm-hmm. But if I had to stand and speak to the whole crowd, then I'd be fucked. So mm-hmm. it's a weird thing mentally. Um, how did I get over a, a stage right? One, this is for any actor, um, preparation. I. Uh, I like to be really prepared. Um, learn learn your lines. That's the best way to get over stage fright is to do the hard work before. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's a thing that, and it's a weird thing because you go through that little conundrum of uh, when you start over practicing in the beginning, it can make you really nervous because then you're like, fuck, I'm starting mm-hmm. to get nervous because I'm thinking so much that I'm going to be stood in front of people doing this. So then you under prepare, and then when you go into the room, you're so you know that you're not really prepared. So then that sets you off a million times more. Do the hard work, and then once you start doing the, once you start uh, doing the hard work, this is originally, um, then it starts to disappear. Yeah. Also, to me, that's sorry. Yeah, sorry, I'll just say that's. I was just going to say before we go to the next part. To me, that sounds kind of like a confidence thing because if you don't have the lines, you probably won't have a lot of confidence. But if you do mm. know your lines, it would help build your confidence, which I think would help with uh, with the idea of being nervous. Yeah, everything everything with film is confidence. Um, you know, you can't you can't perform it unless you're not relaxed. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you know, for every actor, it's still an ongoing struggle. I mean, um, fuck, the other day I did a casting, and out of nowhere, I fucked that up a little bit. Just. just so it's still always an ongoing thing. It's just you. The more you, more you work, you do the better, better it gets. The big thing. Um, I had a stage when I had panic attacks for about four years. Oh wow! And uh, that changed me a lot. And then, uh, yeah, that made that made acting a lot easier. Funny enough. Um, hmm. How so? so uh, um. Because in other, because you, I've, when you're having panic attacks, you're like, fuck, you're going for, uh, have you ever had panic attacks? No. 
So it's like, you know, you're getting these sensations where you can't breathe, your adrenaline's just up to its highest, your brain is like, fuck, I'm going to die. Originally, that's the first, until you mm-hmm. start to understand what's going on. Um, and then often a big part of that is you're in front of people, so you don't want it to happen. It's like, um, but once you've been through that enough times, your brain starts to go, fucking hell, what's the worst that can happen here? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you get used to just it, your emotions being fried. It's frying your emotions. Um, so, yeah, I think that helped massively with acting after. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, especially for getting into darker places, it definitely helps, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which uh, we'll get into uh, very darker places here in a minute. I just I do want to one more thing before we get into the movie was you did say, say you left uh, school at fifteen. Did you leave home at fifteen too? No, no, I left school. Um, yeah, no, I just got expelled, and uh, oh. then it was up to me. And yeah. then I wanted to uh, I wanted to work, so I wanted to yeah, and then. Uh, when I was younger, I, I left home, but I, I was back and forward at my dad's or my mum's. And then uh, my dad moved to France. Um, so I went out there and did some building work. Uh, and then after it was a load of different jobs. But then, yeah, I was always back and forward. But no, home life was okay. That was all good. It was just a personal choice. It was... Uh, I'd gone to live with my dad because originally I was living with my mum and then I'd been to one school and then I'd left that school and then on my third or fourth day I got expelled from another school um, Mm -hmm. just silly stuff and then uh, my dad just said right you've got two choices do you want to go to another school or do you want to go and work Um, but he said if, if you you know, if, if you're not going to go to school, everybody works. That's a that's a rule, and that's how it went. <laughs> and and then it was something which I regretted years later. I was like, sure. "Fuck! I should have stayed at school." And <laughs> you know, you're jealous of your friends when they start to go to college or uni. Mm-hmm. But it's easy to do that years later. But at that point, I just wanted money, and I wanted to, I wanted to do whatever I wanted. So I did. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So um, who's watching Oliver? Says the, when you talk about dark places, clearly dark places in uh, in this movie. And I didn't know actually you were one of the writers till till, till the end credits. Uh, yeah. Were, was that since the beginning of the of the the movie, or did did you get add in later, or were you always one of the no, original writers? Um, no, it was originally my idea to do the film. So, okay. like, um, so originally, like, Richie Moore is an old friend. Um, I, I actually met him, he directed, but I met him on the standing jobs. So I've known him for years. And we always said, uh, I tried to get a, a script, which I wrote, I tried, called Happenstance. I tried to get that made with Richie, but that never happened about mm-hmm. five years ago. Um, Raymond Huber, I'd worked with Raymond on Cam to Cam and some and uh, some other films. And yeah, I knew that I wanted to do a serial killer film. Um, originally, I had a complete different feeling and idea for it. Then uh, Raymond came on board, and me, Richie, and Raymond. Then we started writing it every every day and completely changed. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it took shape that way. So, uh, what was it? The what, what was the reason behind wanting to do a serial killer movie? Um, I'd already done, I'd already played a serial killer a few times, but I just never. One, I, yeah, I just felt I had more to give in that. I felt there was a lot more I could give, and. Uh, and it was, yeah, it was something which I was interested in. I wanted to do a dark role mm-hmm. uh, and just really go for it as a... So, yeah, that, that was the main reason for the serial killer part. But then uh, 
Yeah, when we was writing it, like originally I had Oliver would have been more of a, and it wasn't an Oliver. Like when I say originally the idea of a serial killer, that was it. That I really didn't have any thoughts of, of the film. Mm. Um, but then when we started to write the film, originally in my head, Oliver was more like that. Uh, you know, the film uh, Henry portrait of a serial killer. Uh, yeah, actually. Oddly enough, that you bring that, I did have that in my notes. Um, just something about the movie, but uh, I'll, I'll explain what, what, how how I had connected the move the two movies. Uh, uh, after you finish here. Well, it's like in that in that uh, film, the killer is Henry's. He's so much more, you know. He's he's a lot more there, a lot more calculated, a lot more cool. Mm-hmm. So that, that originally, that's how I kind of had a uh, had the the feeling of Oliver. And then uh, Raymond Ray, he started to say more about, uh, came up with the idea of, uh, um, what's his name, out of uh, Back to the Future, George McFly type okay. character. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then then the whole film just, once once uh, that idea came up, the, the whole film started to change. And then once we started, once we, we decided that we was... Uh, gonna change his appearance um yeah then we started to think about reasons and yeah then uh, the whole idea of Oliver and how his background and obviously he's you know he has shades of autism um mm-hmm. and why what what would have you know a lot of the abuse which he would have went through so and then it just grew and grew and grew that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? Um, cause I'm, a, I actually really enjoy, uh, I could say all of them, but, uh, good serial killer movies. And, uh, I thought honestly, not to see here, I thought this movie's excellent. And, Thank uh, you. Henry's Henry's on like the top of my list for serial killer movies. I love Henry. And, yeah. Yeah. It's just a fantastic movie. Uh, the similarity that I saw is actually, and I don't want to give too much away of the movie, is uh is the love interest because i always think in henry and and some other movies there's a point where like the serial killer or a character like that has a chance to find almost not necessarily redemption but uh some not even be normal but find so, so someone and yeah then, and escape so, from from the dark exactly and so yeah, the guy, like it's a uh, good versus evil in the film you know mm-hmm Mm. Yeah, even Taxi Driver kind of has that in a way, even though it's a different kind of movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, great film as well. Yeah. yeah. So, so you kind of talked about how the character changed from how you originally were seeing it. How did uh, is you mentioned McFly? Is there anybody else or anything that you kind of based the the character on, or any experience or anything? Um, not in in real life. No. Um. Yeah, well, which up, is prob- but, that's probably good, I guess. But yeah. yeah, and then uh, Ray said also, originally we was playing with, like, um, this, um, Innocence of, like, Forrest Gump and uh, G- George McFly. And then, then we watched a lot of documentaries. Um, me, me and Richie, Ray, we watched, Jesus, about 200 documentaries on serial killers, but also then on mental health and different um so yeah throughout the process the character completely changed um yeah the way he walked the way he talked uh and then i think that that also affected the the mama scenes because um the nice not nicer the more damaged the more hurt Oliver became we had to show him why and that means that in a way you have to go harder with the other scenes if that makes sense at all mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. and then the uh, I think uh, um, the innocence of the character and obviously what happened to him it uh, it makes him a sympathetic character which is hard to do when it's someone who's doing such terrible things yeah like well, yeah that's it as a uh, for me, like, I'm playing on this. My job was, I'm playing him as a victim, even though he's doing the worst stuff ever. 
Mm-hmm. He's, I'm still because in a way he's been forced into it by his mother, you know, and uh, he doesn't he doesn't want to be doing that, but he is. Mm-hmm. So, like, you had to play him as, as a complete victim. Uh, but yeah, no, it's fucking. It was it was a rough film to shoot, and it wasn't a nice set. It wasn't enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, we shot a lot of the dark stuff first, uh, and it was horrible. Really, uh, not just for me, for the whole crew. It really had a dark feel. Also, we shot in a really like that house where Richie used to live. Um, just horrible vibes. Anyway, it was a real. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a nice set. Um, and then, like, Sarah, Sarah Malakul Lane, her scenes came into it a bit later, and it was just a polar opposite, complete opposite, where we're, we're shooting nights, we're shooting shooting dark with blood, and now we're shooting in this really, like, out in the middle of the day in this crazy theme park with this fucking music in the background, which <laughs> just won't go out of your head. Like... Mm-hmm. Uh, I can still hear the 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 song in the theme park. Jesus, um, but that we needed that at that point. We needed that bit of nice, not just in the film, but in shooting. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, but no, it was great. Sarah having Sarah on board was great. It was the second time I worked with her, but uh, yeah, really fantastic having her on board. Yeah, and in the the girls who played the victim. Uh, Victims: Kelly, Kelly Woodcock, uh, Cecilia Belletti, and Sh- Champagne. They were fuck the. Uh, they earned. They earned it. They 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 were great, really great. Mm-hmm. Well, it's too. I mean, uh, when you talk about uh, you know hard things to shoot, I, I would assume that would be uh, you know uncomfortable for for them to uh, to shoot a lot of the scenes. Mm. Yeah. No. Completely. Um, it was uncomfortable for everybody. Uh, like the first, obviously, there's a rape scene in there, which is uh, uh, it's about the worst scene ever to film. It, it was just rough. It was horrible. Um, luckily, the saving grace is that Kelly Woodcock's an old friend, so um, not that it helped, but it helped more so because we knew each other. Um, yeah. But it was just horrible. It was horrible. Horrible scene. Um, super long scene. Oh, it's just as bad as they come. Um, but that's what we agreed on when we was writing it. We, we said, look, we, we're going to have this scene. We want to show how bad a mama, like, Jesus, Margaret Roche. Um, mm-hmm. She's this little sweet old woman. She hasn't really acted before. And, uh she turns into like the evilest, worst thing you could ever imagine. Yeah. Um, and that first scene that it is long, like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's, and it doesn't cut away, you know, a lot. It's, uh, that makes the other scenes and, uh, more powerful because you don't have to necessarily show as much because you know, uh, yeah. what, you know, what is happening to them. Well, that was it. And it's funny because some people who have watched the film, um, because they botched that first scene, they start to think that all the scenes and the rest are that that bad, but it's not. And that that's what I've said to him. Like, well, we didn't show as much in the rest of the scenes, like a few, but it, it was originally that first long scene where we went all in, and then it, you know now now that story's kind of been told. So the next scenes, so even though some of the words are there and that, it's not not to that degree. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, they were rough, man. They were, those scenes were rough to shoot. They were hard, real yeah. hard. Um, so, mm. uh, so to the 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 actress you mentioned who played your mom is um, for her scenes. Are they already filmed, or is yeah. she? Uh, you know, okay. So I don't they know were, they're very, No, they were the very first uh, scenes of the film shot. Was her scenes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, do you actually have them playing there while you're filming? It's kind of a technical question. Do you actually have them there filming there and interacting with her? Uh, with yeah. The then we're, yeah. Then I was re- reacting with uh, the recording, trying to get my timing down for her recording. Yeah. 
Mm. And uh, you already kind of mentioned this, but just kind of the idea of uh, uh, what makes someone, uh, you know, do bad things or is someone born evil or is uh, their environment, you know, make them uh, who they are, which is, I think is a big part of, uh, of this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And, but I think in real life, that that's a fact. Sure. If you look at, if you look at a lot of, uh, Abuse seems to stem on abuse. That seems to be something that the history books would definitely tell us. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I, like the worst. Some people are. Not, I, I believe some people are born e- evil anyway. Um, but I, I definitely feel like Jesus. If you fuck somebody up, they can they can turn pretty fucked up and do some bad shit shit as well. And that, that's the one thing which we learn throughout the film is that um, Oliver started off as a kid in this fucked up situation. Um, he's obviously had to deal with a lot of mental, physical, sexual abuse. And uh, it's left him a complete walking um, vehicle of madness. Do you know? So, yeah. Uh, but... Yeah, no, I, I think, um, and you know, it, it's funny because a lot of that, uh, a lot of the stuff, the backstory stuff, which you, you don't see, is is what we really took a lot of. Uh, we took that really serious. So, mm-hmm. for me, Rich and Ray, we really ran into a lot of the stuff, and, and as I was saying, with a lot of the documentaries and the reading, a lot of of the outcome of previous, um, not to that degree, but what effect abuse mental physical would have on you um yeah yeah and i I like the you mentioned that you don't necessarily see a lot of it you you do see some of it and you get a you know a take of what what happened to him but uh Mm. if you go too far with that then i think you're kind of you know beating someone over the head you know what what to think and stuff you give enough to to get the idea yeah no definitely definitely it's like it's just there and there's little clues with what's being sad throughout the film you know you do, mm-hmm. don't want to spoon feed somebody something but uh yeah mm. who, who actually drew like the the book that was topaz uh topaz lacron um richie and topaz were a couple at the time when we were shooting and uh she came on she also helped with the makeup and uh feeding us like doing their food on the set um she was great great um, yeah, but that, that artwork, that's hers. Um, we had no, no say on it. Like the drawings, she just came up with that. Like her and Richie worked on that together. Uh, mm. yeah, they came out cool. I like them. Mm. How about, how about the, uh, the music in the movie There's a lot of like old timey, uh, uh, music was. So when you're making the movie, like, uh, do you have that in mind? Um, that's going to be there or is that like a decision you make after you film it well we had a that in mind to a degree a lot of that was ray and alex boesson uh alex did the sound in the film which uh really pleased with throughout um he was great and he brought in so much fuck his equipment's worth of, like just amazing but in post they were working on that um before that we we were looking at uh, other music we was also looking because we knew that we couldn't really, uh, you know, music's super expensive. So mm-hmm. we realized that we would have to go old style in a lot of it. And then uh, the, there's one song in there, which is actually uh, Topaz's sister singing the theme park song. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so that's uh, Jennifer Lacron, amazingly mm-hmm. talented. Um, but then the old style music, which we have going on, like that really old sound. Uh, yeah, that was Alex and Ray mainly. They was went over and looking over thousands and thousands of songs. Um, mm-hmm. And and but then we was when we was making it, we had ideas that we were, we was definitely going to go old style um, because yeah, but it it felt with the dress with with. Uh, yeah, we thought that would add a lot to the scenes. Yeah, because I think in a couple levels, one, it's a nice 
uh, it's a contrast with like all the violence that's happening. And then you kind of mm-hmm. have like this pleasant music. And also I think uh, in a lot of ways, Oliver is still stuck, you know, in childhood. And then, so you have yeah. the old timey music that kind of enhances that kind of feeling. And then it also takes away like, um, takes away what year we're in. I uh, even though we're in the that's present. True. Yeah. It makes it, 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 makes just, it timeless. Yeah. A bit more timeless. That's that's the word. So that's what we was going for. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's kind of a, a technical question. I've always kind of wondered this when, because there's a there's a great montage scene uh, near the mm. end of the movie. Uh, when you film like a montage scene like that, how much do you film of of each of those bits? Do you just film like a few seconds, or do you film a little bit, you know, and decide how much to cut out of it? Yeah. Um. So uh, there was a couple of montages in the film. Um, some of it we filmed a lot more and then one of the films I think it's always going from left to right Um, so that would have been like a camera which I'd had planned it's Mm -hmm. a moving montage so that one we wouldn't have shot as much of but the the other scene where it's actually just bits coming in then we shot a lot more of those scenes yeah that makes sense definitely Mm -hmm. um did you did you have much? Uh, I know you you wrote it. You're obviously in it. Did you have uh, any any say or hands on like the editing of the movie? No, not the editing. Not 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 at all. Um, that was uh, again Ray and then Jesse Maddox. Those two really hit the editing hard. Um, yeah, like um, post Ray had a big influence on on how it turned out. Um, and, uh, yeah, we had a guy called Jesse Maddox, great guy. Um, and then Ray, yeah, you've seen a, a pattern with Ray. He done, he done a lot on the film. He, oh. he was hands on from, uh, the second he came in, it, it was super small crew. The, the film we like originally, so like me, Richie and Ray, um, and then people like Alex Baez on, uh, Jesse Maddox, uh, Gal, who produced as well, they came on board, but it, it was a super small film, um, real small crew. So, yeah, Ray uh, never stopped working. Mm. So, w- when you saw the finished cut of the movie, uh, what did you think of it? Um, I saw the first, I saw a, an earlier version. Mm-hmm. Um, the earlier version, I wasn't, I was like, fuck, didn't know. And then, uh, because, but the earlier version had like an extra 45 minutes on it. So it was, mm-hmm. it was a completely different movie. Um, and do you know what, like, fuck, I'm not one for, I, I get freaked out watching myself anyway. So I'm sure. not a fair judge. Like, I'm not sitting there going, Oh yeah, this story looks good or whatever. No, I'm I'm a selfish motherfucker. I'm sat there going, "Fuck, <laughs> what do I look like there?" Jesus, and, right. you know that that's what what's really going on. So, um, what? no, fuck, I hated the film at first. At first, I was like, "Oh my god, we're gonna be destroyed." I tell you when I liked it. I liked it when we had the first review came in and they were really nice, and then suddenly my brain went. It's a fucking masterpiece. No, <laughs> I, not like yeah. that, but um, yeah. yeah, that's I. I'm watching myself, and I'm I'm sat there thinking, oh my god, everybody's gonna. What what have I done? Like, have I? <laughs> I've ruined <yeah>. myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, not even that. It, it's just yeah. You know, you cr- you critical about yourself anyway. Of so course. until until people. A nice to you, you assume the worst, and you're an unfair judge. You car- like you're judging the whole film differently. Um, mm-hmm. But no, like the editing was amazing, um, and I, I had no idea. I, I, you know, that that was the whole thing that me, me, Richie, and Ray um, were well, actually funny. Again, Ray and Richie. The second we started writing this, we said, right, we're going to write this film exactly how we want it and we're going to stick with everything and shoot it that way and we're not going to we're not going to go easy on any scenes um and 
like Ray was sorted out because with the investor had worked with Ray before, so he made a deal right from the beginning that we we get a hundred percent say, um, and we get, we're only gonna if if we only ever get to make this serial killer film once, which we obviously you do, we're, we're doing it exactly how we want. We're not gonna, and that that's why the scenes are so harsh because um, we didn't we, we kept kept to our word, and a few times when some of us were saying like fuck that maybe we are going a bit too far here we mm. this is when we'd say no this is what we agreed um we said we was going to go all in and tell this story and and we did and and fuck we know i know we're going to get some shit you, you watch the film some people can sure. like it some people are not it, yeah it's, it's definitely uh, not for everyone mm-hmm. um and then some people are going to say those harder scenes are in there just for shock value, and mm-hmm. that, that's the provocative. But to me, those harder scenes tell a story. Um, you know, like there's that scene when I'm at the laptop on my own with my mother, and yeah. I have to, and she forces me to do stuff. Mm-hmm. Fuck, that's that's a horrible scene in there. But yeah. without that scene, that tells. You know, you watch that scene, now you can go back 15 years, 20 years, and you can see that woman doing that to to, to the younger version. Because, mm-hmm. you know, and now now you, as an audience, you understand exactly what, what he's had for the last 20 years. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I believe a lot of the scenes have been there for a reason. And I understand that we're, we're, we're going to get shit from them. But um, but so far we haven't. Funny enough, um, so far we everybody's been super kind to us. The horror community have been amazing, absolutely mm-hmm. amazing. Um, and listen, when when we uh, originally we had a goal of getting into two or three festivals, just being selected. Um, mm-hmm. We never expected to go and win. We won thirteen best feature in the end. Um, myself, I, I won some acting awards, and then we won other awards for writing and other parts. We never expected that. That that was a complete shock. Um, and then right from that happening, the same people, the same uh, horror community, the same guys booking into the festivals, looking after us. Uh, they're the ones who help spread the word about our film. Mm-hmm. There's always been somebody say, "Hey, contact this guy." I, I'm not. I think that's how we got in touch with it originally. Somebody had put me on to you. Is that right or not? Uh, yeah, uh, I know uh, you messaged the, the Without Your Head page, and I'm sure someone did. Okay, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You know, I assume someone you know led you to the Without Your Head page, you know? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yes, exactly that. Somebody, uh, I'm trying to think. I think that might have been Meredith, Meredith Bogart Brown. Okay. Had suggested you guys. Um, but it's it's been like that the whole way. It's been like from one person to another, and everybody's just been been really really super nice to us. Super super nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and without the horror community being like this with us, fuck would be nowhere. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's it's literally been it's been nuts. It, it's been completely crazy. Like. Ever since the first couple of reviews, they put us on to the next person who put us on to the next person. And and it's just been like this little spread. It's been spreading. Um, and that mm-hmm. that's what now we sold. I, I can't go into the details because it's not released sure. yet. But fuck, we exceeded ourselves a million percent with who we sold to. Um, mm-hmm. In the next few months, we're, we're getting a big wide release. Oh, which, nice. Yeah. Um, completely, completely shocked. Really, um, all of us we're, we're so we're ecstatic. We can't believe the, you know, how much this little film, how far it's got the potential of going. Which, Jesus, once if you told me that when I sat and watched the first version of it, and I, and I'm watching myself on camera kill and do terrible things or crying, there's no way. No way! I'm like, fuck. We're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So were you at any of the festivals uh, to, uh, when it was screened? Uh, yeah, I went to one in England. I went to uh, Stu Joe Pierce Festival in Southport, oh. and that was uh, Dead of the Night Festival. Amazing festival. Um, super nice festival that was. Um, really nice screen. And Stu Joe Pierce, he, uh, he directed the film called Good Tidings. Yeah, yeah. We uh, had him on the show, um, the, him and like uh, his other uh, two partners in Good Tidings. When uh, okay, super cool guy. Yeah, right? yeah definitely. Uh, Good yeah, Tidings is a great movie too. It's very uh, yeah, grindhouse house kind of exploitation. Yeah, you know, it's nuts. I loved it. Loved film. it. Yeah. People, you should go and check out Good Tidings. Especially, it's uh, yeah, it's a uh, Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I think they just put out the. I think they just put out the Blu-ray where you get like because uh, I have it actually, and it, it comes with like a like a Christmas card. Nice, nice. Yeah. He's said, but this is what I, when I was saying about people in the horror community. He like Stu Joper. He he put us onto. I can't even remember how many people. Um, there's been certain people. Which have just been amazing, and I'm forgetting who they are, like Nadine in, in Canada, Meredith Bogart Brown has helped us no end. Uh, yeah, there's been so many great people who have watched the film, loved it, and just gone on a mission to f- fucking help us. Kurt, Kurt Oglesby, um, yeah, I can't remember all the people, Nick, Nick Fawada, loads of people. They've just been really amazing, really. And uh, I don't, I don't know if they realise how how much they've fucking done for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they hopefully do now after listening. But uh, I know uh, Stu's uh, part of the Without Your Head uh, Facebook mm. group and stuff. He's a cool guy, like you said. With, at the at the uh, festival itself, though, did you watch it with the audience, and what was that uh, experience? So, like? yeah, I did. It was uh, mortifying. It was great. <laughs> Because uh-huh. it was a lovely screen, but that was the first time I'd seen it on a big screen. Um, mm. So I went in there, I got to the back, back of the room, and then uh, for the first 20 minutes of that film, so in comes, I'm there and I'm sat and I'm like, oh my God, fuck, fuck. Like, I'm nervous as you can, about to have a panic attack then, so I'm like, fuck. Um, and then a, uh, a father walks in, and I swear his daughter was about 12 or 13 years old. And he sat in the seat it's right in front of me. And I'm like, oh, please, no, 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 no. And then uh, I'm looking at him like, Jesus, do you know what film? This is like a real hardcore serial killer. Why have you brought your daughter in, into watching this? And uh, I know what scene's coming up, first of all, that big, long, horrible scene. And I'm mm-hmm. sat there sinking into my seat going please don't look around at me yeah um and then they got up and walked out because he shouldn't have been taking in his kid to that fucking <laughs> to watch who's watching oliver um and then yeah no then i relaxed then everybody was super nice super super cool um but yeah no it was nerve-wracking watching it in front of people because then you're not watching the film you're watching other people so right. you're just sat at the back of a room and then uh <laughs> Yeah, a certain scene comes on, and you're like, "Yeah, you, it's hard, man. It's hard." But I, I'm, I, it's hard watching anything in front of people. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, you said you can't really talk about it, but uh, people will be able to uh, to be be able to view it here in the coming months. Yes, um, in the next, and this is a game where people have been amazing. Um, so like now, because we, we're just waiting for the release date to be released, but then already we've got about, uh, Jesus, so now I think there's about 70 or 80 already lined up uh, publications who are going to be doing a piece on us, which is amazing. Oh. Um, so we've already got different newspapers around the world in different countries. We've got like uh, newspapers in Australia, America, England, have a waiting for us to release that we've sold it and who to and then they're going to be doing a piece on us um we've got 
We've already had most of the horror magazines, but a lot of them have said they want to come back and do a different piece on us or, or interview. Um, we've had a load of uh, film magazines that aren't horror waiting to do a piece on us. So, yeah, just before the months before, should be about uh, end of April, we should be getting the wide release, but then people should be hearing about us. And then, yeah, we're going to be easy reachable to everybody, which is, is it's fucking insane. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm very excited. I'm excited for you because I really, I really enjoyed Thank the movie. You. Again, not just because you're here. And uh, uh, Jason Minton, who does our reviews on our website, who can, he's very honest and sometimes he's, uh, you know, kind of uh, brutal on movies. He gave you four out of five, which is I know we were very, just very high. buzzing off that. So yeah, no, really appreciated that. I think a big thing which everybody's been who's watched the film have said that it doesn't look low, as low budget. Definitely, um, that's that's a good and point. And I think that com- that comes down to Richie, because Richie, like his backstory, it's his first time directing, but. Mm-hmm. He's been a cameraman and a cinematographer on some of the biggest films in the world. And he shot this. Um, like, he, he, he did uh, Hangover 2 and 3, oh, Mission wow. Impossible, um, all, all the Marco Polo series. I think he was every day shooting on them. Um, Gold with Matthew McConaughey, No, es- no Escape, Fallen, the Denzel Washington film. The list just goes on and on. Mm-hmm. So although it's his directorial debut... Um, fuck, like filming it, it, that's his forte, and yeah. it, it looks like that's what everybody's saying. It, it looks nice, it's shot nice, and yeah. uh, that, that's that's all Richie. Richie, not only did he direct, he, he picked up the camera and he shot himself because that that's his specialty. And he said there's no way he'd be able to hand it over to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that, and that. Definitely helped us selling, selling the film. Mm-hmm. Definitely that the quality of the film, um, and Richie's background is obviously that that was a big, you know, big thing on us. Yeah, it, it really raises the production values if uh, uh, an independent movie is like like you said shot well or uh, different something with the lighting, different things like that really enhances the production value. I think of a, of a movie. Yeah, and then, and then like. We had people like Mark Hammond came in and shot for a few days. Uh, and he shot just because he's like a friend of, of Richie's and unbelievable. Like, you know, there, there's some of the people, same with Alex and that. Um, so we had this tiny little budget, but we had these these amazingly talented people come and, come and work on the film. And, and I think that's that, that, that was really helped us like the sound in the film that's another thing what people have said is you know our sound isn't of you would never guess it's a low budget film with the sound either because we were shooting on like fuck i can't even remember we had like four or five microphones always going so it, it and then he worked on it and like the version you've seen isn't the, i don't think you've seen the, the the absolute finished version because the sound was okay. still always being twinkled, tweaked, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, that is really, really, really pleased with with the outcome, and uh, yeah. Mm. It's the uh, a silly question. Uh, are you afraid of any of the broken mirrors bringing bad luck? Um, I'm, man, I'm superstitious on on everything. So yeah, I, I am. <laughs> Oh, I'm a okay. pussy. I, I get scared of everything. <laughs> uh-huh. but, like, but but I didn't break them. And all right, all right he, here's a fun fact: that uh-huh. broken mirror was already on Richie's wall. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he's a fucking freak. <laughs> what in there? It's all weird shit going on all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, I tell you, you, you lot should speak to Richie. I put you. Um, I'm not sure if he's. If I put you in touch with him yet or not? Yeah, actually, you wanna, yeah, yeah. Uh, the email there, I, I believe. No, no, it wasn't him. It was uh, someone else who sent me the uh, the screen. Uh, Rich yeah. Ragsdale as well, maybe. Uh, I think I think I mentioned you you to Rich Ragsdale directed Ghost House. I think I mentioned uh, 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 Ray as well. But, uh, 
Oh, Ray, Ray, uh, Ray. Yeah. Ray, Ray, yeah, Ray's a producer. But no, you should have, uh, I'll get Richie to come on the show if you want, and then uh, yeah, be awesome. he'll give you a complete different spin of it. He's, he's yeah. a wild dude. He's a wild motherfucker, Richie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll get, I'll get the story of the mirror. Then. Yeah, like, that's a whole uh, whole different different thing. Story of yeah. the fan not having a cover as well. Uh, a lot of little details is uh, yeah. is the madness of Rich Oh, uh, I'll have to watch it again to, to find it. I actually did watch it twice, and uh, I really liked it the first time, but I actually liked it even better uh, the second time I watched it. I bet, you know, that's the one thing. There's so many hidden things in that film that are just for us. Um, and then if people notice them, they notice. But there's so many little hidden things going on in that film. And and it's interesting. That's something which we're we're interested to see. That which I'm not going to say because I don't want to give it away to people. Yeah, but I agree. If they go and watch it and they see stuff on a second or the third time, which uh, which yeah, we definitely did a lot of things that I'm not sure came across yet, or if they have that people. It, yeah, we planned a lot of a lot of hidden little gems in there. Mm. Yeah. And uh, so, how can people follow the uh, what's going on with the movie online? So, if you just if you on our Facebook page, um, everything new we update on that, um, which is just if you type in "Who's Watching Oliver" on uh, Facebook, mm-hmm. um, and we're gonna be yeah, everything's always updated on there. Um, that's the main place. And uh, how, how about yourself? How can people? Not find you like um, uh, in Bangkok, but how can they find you online? Yeah, so I have a Facebook page, which uh, anybody can follow me on there, or I I have Twitter. Um, just everything's under my full name, Russell Jeffrey Banks. You can always find me off Google on there. Um, but yeah, no, I'm always e- easily found. Cool. And he did mention Ghost House. So I did want to say that's a, is that on, uh, it's either on Netflix or Amazon. Because I know I watched it. That, on that's things. on Netflix in America yeah. now. So uh, go and watch that. Uh, I shot that one before. Who's watching Oliver? Hmm. Um, and it was a amazing film to be on. Amazing people. Rich Ragstyles, one of the coolest coolest motherfuckers I've ever worked with, and I'm definitely hoping to work with him again. He's he's a real horror horror geek. So. Oh, cool! You'd buzz off him. He's um, really into the genre. Um, yeah. you, sort of like what you're saying, though. Like uh, I do love horror movies, but uh, I really just love movies. But uh, yeah. I just won't. Not even that uh, necessarily horror is my favorite, but uh, I, it's uh, better to have some type of theme, I think, for the show. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, I sit and watch anything. I can sit and watch anything. Uh, yeah. As long as, yeah, if something's like, good, it's good. It's, if something's long, good, it's good, it's good, good. I think. Well, yeah. Okay, so I so I like I can't sit and watch anything. I can't <laughs> like um yeah, it, even though this is an indie film, I, I I can turn off a lot of indie films like which are uh, yeah. It depends the storytelling. I'm if, if the storytelling shit, I'm I, I turn it off. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if it's just yeah. And it's funny, maybe it depends if something's super, super low budget but not shot nice, mm-hmm. then then I find it hard to stick with all the sound. Yeah, little things that once, you know, you're the same, I, I guess, we're around films, so once you start watching stuff and then you're like, ah, then, yeah, then if it looks, it looks like on. almost something so, someone would just film for like YouTube or something. If, yeah. If, you know, and you know that's fine if you're just messing around. But if it's an actual movie that you're trying to sell, it should, you know, uh, you can look over, look a lot of things, obviously. But uh, it it does get to a point where it's like, well, this, you know, looks totally unprofessional, you know. Yeah, but then, do you know what? It's different now though because there's so much content to watch everywhere. Like oh, back when I was younger, it, it was always a thing. I'm sure you was the same with the old VHS. I'd yeah. go out on missions, even like second-hand shops, wherever, to go and find hidden hidden gems. Yeah, exactly. Like these little indie films, which were like hidden gems, and uh, it was that was a thing. And I could spend all day in like f- 
video shops or buying videos and that 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 used to be the thing. I miss oh, those yeah. days. I miss. I that do a lot. too. I used to. I'd go to the video store and uh, you'd rent stuff, you know, based on the uh, the cover usually. And if you found mm-hmm. something, you know, uh, like I said, a hidden gem. In, in a lot of ways, I get the same kind of feeling today because I do get a lot of screeners, and I'm not going to name mm. names, but a lot of them, they're just they're just really not anything. Yeah. And then when when I do get onto a movie like like uh, like your movie, uh, uh, who's watching Oliver? It really is like, oh, this is this really stands out, and then it makes you want to you know tell other people. I tell you, I remember one of the films which uh, fuck, I'm not sure what year it was. Which not a horror film, but it was a, a VHS tape which I bought no expectation, just for about two pounds. Was a what do you call those films? All on one camera, where they a found footage film, uh, mm. gang gang tapes. I think that was called. Mm. Have you ever seen that film? No, I've never seen it. Yeah, like where it starts off at the beginning, uh, gang tape or gang tapes. Yeah, just gang tape. I think it was called. Uh, starts off at the beginning where this video camera has been stolen, like in a carjacking, and then you follow that that video camera around. Mm-hmm. Fuck, unbelievable film. And I remember finding that was like a hidden gem, which I was telling people about at the time. Yeah. Good. Uh, I don't know. It must be twenty years ago now, I guess. But uh, amazing film. Really great film. Yeah. That's very cool. I, I I totally understand that feeling, and it, even though it is it is nice that you can uh, there's all the streaming sites and it makes it easy. Uh, it it's not the same feeling as uh, getting some at the video store. No, it's not, and it's takes away like it, when you was younger, the band films that was the whole thing, weren't it? Sure. Or or like some foreign film or just. Yeah, or what was it? Faces of Death and shit like that back in the day. Right, that was a buzz when, like, that was a whole thing. Like, even when I grew up, when I was young, te- in England, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Exorcist was banned. They were banned mm-hmm. movies when I grew up, yeah. and like, you got a dodgy VHS copy of that. It, it was amazing. That that was yeah. like everybody buzzed uh, I, off that. That was yeah. I because uh, my brother's nine years older, so um. Mm. Uh, when I was a single mom, so uh, she would take him to the movies instead of getting, uh, you know, a babysitter. She'd, you know, take me along too. And also sometimes nice. she would take me to like uh, friends' houses. And I remember uh, when he was probably in high school, so I was probably very young. And yeah. um, uh, a big thing was like someone had a bootleg copy of The Evil Dead because it wasn't at that time. It wasn't easy to get. Like yeah, was, yeah. And so it was a big deal, like, oh, my God, we're going to watch Evil Dead. And it was real terrible quality, which kind of added to it, I think. And, uh, you know, right. it was it was, a, it was a big it was a big deal to everyone. And now you can go and stream it anywhere. But, at, you know, that's a thing, too, like being able to find it. Uh, no, that, that, that was part of the mission. It, you know? it was yeah. part of the mission. And it's same. Like I was I, like my dad used to let me watch horrors really young. Um, like I watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre when I was about ten or nine. I, same like you, we were both fucked up young, <laughs> right? Yeah, but it was amazing. That was like the buzz. The buzz of mm. it was getting these tapes and taking it back and watching this horror, which everybody's telling you that you can't watch, mm-hmm. and that's missing nowadays. It, it's uh, it's just not the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, yeah, I, I tell the story. Uh, I still a bunch of times the show, but. I think I was about six or so, and let's say my mom took my brother uh, and some of his friends, along with my uncle, in his van uh, to go see uh, Night of the Living Dead at the, at the drive-in. And, um, Amazing. And so, like, the, the scene where the, the, the pickup blows up and then the zombies are eating everybody, and, yeah. like, I was getting kind of freaked out. And she told me, like, oh, they're just having a barbecue. And then <laughs> after that, Amazing. like... Uh, yeah, I was just like, oh, okay. And then uh, not to be like a tough guy or nothing. I never, after I was never like scared of horror movies, but uh, I still, I just, you know, just dug them, you know? Yeah. No, I remember, uh, yeah, there used to be like on Sky One, like my dad, I, I lived with my mum, but I'd go and visit my dad. And on Sky One, they used to have the Friday night horror film. So I was allowed to sit, stay and watch that. Mm-hmm. But then, yeah, old films like the old black and white Night of the Living Dead and shit like that. I, I loved all that growing up. Yeah. House, yeah, uh, what's Psycho. one on uh, Psycho? 
unbelievable. What's the one with uh, Hill House? The, the Hill House, yeah, le- the Legend of Hell House, I believe it's called. Um, yeah, House on the Haunted Hill was. House I loved Haunted all those films. Yep. Amazing. Yeah, I used to buzz off all them. Mm-hmm. Um, and they'd scare the fuck out of me. I'm like, I, I used to get scared. Even like the original, I remember the original Friday the Thirteenth. Just watching that, and then like the mums used to scare the fuck out of me. Uh-huh. But and now it all comes around because right that's what that's why you got the mother in, in this movie. Yeah, it, no, it exactly. You. <laughs> I tell you, and but then there's other like even I, I'm a pussy when I watch horror films. Yeah, good horror. Yeah. And see, like for me, gory stuff doesn't really scare me so much. It really it doesn't like. But uh, if I watch a good scary horror i i sh- still scared fuck <laughs> <laughs> what was what the last of... horror about scared you um hmm trying to think uh i don't it's it's we're honestly i, I hate to say this i not really get necessarily get scared about other movies but uh the last one that i really liked this year actually i think this year was uh, a really good year for horror movies yeah, mm. but, uh, I thought I thought it was really good. But did you see Loved the Devil's Candy? Yeah, did you see Devil's Candy? I thought that was one of the best of the year. No, I haven't seen it. Should I? Yeah, I think you would actually really like it. It's uh, mm. there's some. It's totally different than your movie, but uh, there is a similarity where I think you feel sympathy for 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 the uh, the killer. No, I've watched who's it. Really terrible no, I've watched that. I've yeah, watched no. that. Devil's Candy, but it. I loved it. And that was the whole thing. When I, uh, the original of it, I loved the original, but I always hated the second half where they grew up um, when I was younger, like the Stephen, the original one. And yeah. so this one, I, I loved this one. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, I loved it too. And uh, I like that. Uh, I actually really like the the old the the original Pennywise, but and I like this one too. I just think it's a different take on the same character. Yeah, no, the original Pennywise was amazing. And this one, though. Yeah, I like yeah. both. Um, the original one was is, different because I was young. Yeah, and I think this one, they made it more otherworldly, where it is a creature, which, mm. which he is still in, in the first movie, but it's just played that way. So I think it's just, you know, like yeah. a different take on, on the same guy. But I always mm. think that's the strength, of, definitely the strength of the, the first one is uh, when they're kids. Like, yeah. So, yeah, no, that was always uh, just scary. Scary. That's the clown, wasn't it? That's why we're all. Yeah. Yeah. But Stephen no, I King was buzzing. Had, yeah. Stephen King must have had some really, really bad bullies because that's a theme in a lot of his movies. They're all yeah. like very hor- horrible bullies, not just like, you know, a normal pick on you bully. Yeah. What's your favorite Stephen King? Um. Oh, the sh- oh, I, Stephen King, King, though, isn't it? Yeah. The Shining, Shining's great. Uh, you mean movies or, or books? Uh, movies. Movies. Maybe. Yeah. Well, Shining. I, I'd have to put. I probably Shining, or, or I really like Pet Cemetery. Mm. And uh, I like it a lot too. Um, and then uh, I also like some of the non-horror ones, like Shawshank Redemption and Stand oh, Up. Oh shit! Fuck. Yeah. yeah Jesus. Um, love Shawshank and Stand By Me. Yeah. yeah. I even, I like some of the, I, I think a lot of his films, like, but they were directed by different people and that anyway, but first halves were always amazing. That's what I, I like. There was, wasn't there a film called Tommy Knockers, Doppelgangers, yeah. the one yeah, with Tommy the Sleepwalkers, no. all mm-hmm. them, I always remember the, loving the first halves. And then, and then just, like, uh, no, not a real uh, good end. Yeah. And I, I, like think, I think some of the... I think doppelgangers they could uh, something like that would I could do with a remake of that but done better I like yeah. that premise of that film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's a lot of there that were uh, could definitely hit, use a, a better version. Uh, I like mm. some of the ones that came. I don't know if you saw the ones that were made for Netflix this year. Um, Gerald's Game and nineteen. Uh, 19- no, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I, I thought both of those were really good. Which one, 19... Uh, 1922, I, I think that's called 1922. That one didn't get as much buzz, but I, I thought it was uh, really well made. And the But mm. the Gerald's game, you know, had more people talking about, which I thought that was a really good movie, too. Horace, I, I like... Uh, that's another one which I like. Just reminded, Room 1408. Really enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Of course, I love Creep Show, which uh, King uh, yeah did the, nice. the stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- that was the first VHS tape my mom bought me. Uh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> the old clam first... shell. I'm trying to think the first VHS tape, which... Uh... Yeah. Well, we, rent, Probably... we rented a lot more before that, but that was the first one Jake G bought me. Yeah, I think bought for me, for me personally, would be maybe Flight of the Navigator. Okay. Not a horror. But it was amazing. Maybe? Uh, maybe a Hulk Hogan tape back in the day. No, I'm, I'm a big wrestling fan. Amazing. I don't know if you know where they're at, but yeah. You are, or you're not. No, I am. Yeah, a big wrestling fan. Oh, I, yeah. also do a, a, I also do a wrestling podcast on TV. Oh, amazing. Ronda Rousey, eh? Yeah, exactly. Roy Rumble was awesome. Mm. I, uh, I'm not anymore, but fuck, when I grew up, everybody was. Everybody. Uh-huh. And uh, I, st- I can still get emotional about some of the some of the wrestling events from when I was younger. Earthquake breaking Hulk Hogan's back. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, Piper was definitely my favorite growing up. Uh, I was a big fan of Roddy Piper. Um, is it? Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh, Macho Man. Yeah. Oh, the old. Uh, used to <laughs> love it. Used to love the old uh, old WWF. Yeah. 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 What? How do you think Ronda Rousey is going to do over there? I think she's going to do well. It's, uh, you know, I was a little skeptical at first because she is coming off the losses, but when she came out there, it did seem like a you know it did seem like a big moment. She's pointing up at the WrestleMania sign, and it was cool. Hmm. I don't know if you knew this, but she's wearing uh, Roddy Piper's jacket. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah she, she, she asked for his name originally, right? Yeah, and, and he he gave her blessing to do the the mm. rowdy. Uh, so they have yeah. that shirt. It looks like the old uh, hot rod shirt back in the eighties. Do you know, I, my favorite rowdy Ruddy Piper match was when uh, he fought the Mountie that back was a good in one. the, and they had the stun gun thing. <laughs> and uh-huh. uh, what was it? He wore like oh, it was so dumb, but it was amazing. I just remember being a kid watching it. And he yeah. gets stunned by the stun gun, falls down, and then obviously when the guy turns around, then he suddenly stands up, and he rips open <laughs> his shirt, what says shockproof on it. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was so dumb, but it was, uh-huh. but it was just great. Uh, uh, the Ma- the Mountie's theme song was great, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I am the Mountie. Uh, I am so the Mountie. Days. I could sing it, but I probably shouldn't. <laughs> Go on, I think you should. Now you just put it out there. Uh, I am the Mountie. I'm handsome. <laughs> I'm brave. I'm strong. I am the Mountie, and I enforce the law. Uh, you can try to run, but you can never hide because the Mountie always gets his man. Oh, amazing! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, growing up, there was uh, there was like three things that I think mattered to. Uh, well, for sports, <laughs> video games, wrestling, and films. That's, mm-hmm. that's basically every part of of my childhood, what I was into. <laughs> Mine was probably movie, definitely movies, uh, wrestling, and um, and uh, instead of sports, I was into Dungeons and Dragons. So, but uh, well, what about uh, Street Fighter Two back in the day? Um. Yeah, I never. I actually never got into the the fighting games for some reason. Oh, loved it, loved it. Uh-huh. But, uh, that I did game like ball, and I used to like Gauntlet. Yeah, Street Fighter Two changed my life. Oh, I remember it, before it before it came out on the Super Nintendo. Used to used to try and get like I think it was ten p ago back then. To, there used to be a shop that had the arcade machine uh, mm-hmm. before primary school. That is. And there'd be a, a row of kids waiting outside, so you join the road to play the winner. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then you put all the quarters, you'd have all your quarters saved to be putting in the machine. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know if if arcades are even. I know they're they're they exist, but it's not really a big thing anymore. I don't think. Yeah, because well, like, what's the point nowadays if you can just go home and have it better, right? Eh? Yeah. Whereas when I arcade when I was a kid, it was like you you're looking at you're playing on these games which you just couldn't play anywhere else. They're amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he had the uh, I had Atari when I was real young, and then you know Nintendo and stuff. And as fun as they were, they weren't nearly the same as the as the arcade version. No, nah, like the first, uh, well, at my dad's he had a Spectrum ZXK, mm-hmm. and then uh, the first thing that I had was a Sega Master System um, before the Sega Genesis. Oh, it was unbelievable, amazing. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh. yeah, all those, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Those were the days. But, uh, oh, yeah, right. Uh, VHS so what, tapes sound so old. <laughs> yeah, when, uh, for the VHS tape, there used to be a... a um, in, the, in the town when I was a kid, was... Uh, I forget the name of it now. Shit, but... Uh, anyway, my my uh, one of the kids I went to school with, a friend of mine, his parents owned it. And so they'd have, like, a... Uh, they'd have a calendar, and they'd have different days with, like, a joke day... You come in and say a joke, and you'd get like a. You could buy one, you rent one, get one free. That's and amazing. You'd bring in your report card. If you got an A, you got a free movie and all that stuff. And then uh, I remember though when uh, Blockbuster moved in, uh, they they told them like you know either you can sell sell out to us or we'll put you out of business. And it was mm. you know, really the end of. Uh, I remember yeah. I worked in a I worked in a Blockbuster in Shepherd's Bush in London for a bit. Yeah, it was right. We never, yeah, it was never. Yeah, not the same for me as like the mom and pop. Like, uh, no, no, not at all, not at all. Um, no. Yeah, and working there was wasn't as fun as I, I wanted it to be. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was super. So growing up, I was like, even on the jobs when I left school, I got influenced so easy by by films on what job I did. I went and worked in like HMV because literally I watched Empire Records and I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go and work in a, a record <laughs> shop. It uh-huh. sucked. Was it nothing like being in a film? <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. No, uh, well, well uh, it'll be weird though because uh, people growing up now just won't have that, uh, won't have that memory or experience. No. Nah. I worked in a cinema twice as well. The first, that was. The first time that was uh, funny enough. The first time when I worked in a cinema, not this. That was on uh, the Isle of Wight at Cineworld. Um, mm-hmm. If I hadn't have been sacked, I probably could have wasted years at that job because it was so <laughs> easy. Uh-huh. And uh, did you yeah, get free it, movies? Yeah, I just sat and watched movies all the time. <laughs> it was it was uh-huh. amazing. I'd just sit and watch movies. Yeah, and it was a. Uh, it was a super quiet cinema, so uh, it was f- nothing really to do. Just stand around, and then uh, you know you're younger there. Some hot girls work there, um, <laughs> watching movies. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Why'd you get Why'd you get sacked? How'd you get fired? Um. Oh. Uh. That was. So some when I I think when I was working. Um, some guy had uh, came in, and he was just being an arsehole, just <laughs> being an absolute arsehole. And then, uh, yeah, I think I remember him being like, uh, he wanted to go in for free, and I didn't care. And then, uh, yeah, he was just some some somebody causing trouble, and then uh, I lashed out, and it didn't end well. <laughs> He was a fucking dick. I don't know why I'm being so polite. Some little fucking cunt, which he was, just uh-huh. wouldn't leave it alone. You know, you're working with the public, and there was a fucking asshole work and came in one day, and then uh, he kept pushing, pushing, pushing till I pushed back, and that was that. Uh, I'm sure he's but, not listening. So. Don't I don't well. care. Fuck him. <laughs> if he is, he's a cunt. <laughs> Very cool. And uh, that's another thing too. Um, I don't want to bash like so much of you know watching online because um, that's how I watch a lot of stuff. But uh, VHS and stuff. But it's also it's nothing's the same as watching a movie on the big screen. 
don't know. I still I still love watching uh, watching films at the cinema. I still do you know it's so bad as well. I, I'm such a weirdo. I, I love going alone. I still love going alone to the cinema, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I, I buzz I, off I, it. I know my brother once in a while says, oh, there's always like weirdos who go, oh, but I don't know. I'd rather just uh, go myself and not to worry what uh, the, someone else thinks of the movie or any mm-hmm. interaction. Just, uh, I, th- I think that's the thing about uh, actually at the movies. Um, you can't you're, you can't like escape. It's right there in front of you. And so, oh, you know, if you're watching, if, you, if you're watching on a computer, you probably are looking on your phone or, or doing something else. Even if you if you think you're paying attention, you're probably doing something else. But. Uh, in the theater, you're just right there, and it's you. You can't get away from it. So no. Uh, and then totally the problem, theory. if I when I go with people, if I miss the trailers, I'm ruined for the movie, and now I'm in a bad mood for the whole movie. I'm such a <laughs> such a moody bastard. Like that's because when I was going as a kid, you get there for the trailers as well. I, that was always like the big buzz. Mm-hmm. So, but then if you go with somebody who doesn't share that enthusiasm for the trailers mm-hmm. and and then they're, they're late then then it just like you're already going in there like fuck yeah no yeah. I, I buzz i buzz off going i still even working in cinemas even like before in london um i also used used to do like they used to have this thing with uh cine worlds where you could pay back then it was like 11 or 12 pounds a month and you could go unlimited as many times you wanted to oh, any nice. of the chains and I used to go all the time. I even, I used to be so bad. I used to, uh, like, back, I remember with an ex-girlfriend, I'd uh, <laughs> just, yeah, we'd get into bed, I'd wait for her to get full asleep, and then I'd sneak out and go and watch the late showing <laughs> and come back with, like, the smell of popcorn on me. It was, I was <laughs> yeah. yeah it's but like, I still do, a... I still buzz off it. I still just, there's something about walking and sitting I, in your seat in the cinema. I, I yeah, I agree hundred percent. There's um, some here in, in Boston um, that do midnight movies. On, well, one that does midnight movies on the weekend, uh, Coolidge. I'll, I'll give them a good mm-hmm. buzz. And uh, so every every Friday and Saturday they show usually like kind of a cult movie. Uh, yeah. And you know, it's even if it's a movie I've seen a hundred times, it's a totally different experience. Uh, I actually went and saw Henry Porter with Serial Kill there a couple of years ago when they, did the, when they did the midnight show. And it's, it's such a good time. And, and Halloween, they do a 12 hour marathon. Oh, uh, for, love it. Yeah, from midnight midnight to noon the next day. And That's it's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, amazing. They usually have like two headliners, and then the other ones are like, uh, you know, surprised you don't know what they're going to be. And Nice. Nice. Yeah. I. Uh, there's films, even when I, not horrors, but I remember like just going as a kid to watch films, which are still, still to this day, it, it's like an event. It, I still see it as like a growing up event. Like when I went and watched uh, shit like Back to the Future 3, I mm-hmm. think I watched at the cinema. And uh, like, the, what was it, Moonwalker? I remember watching that at the cinema. Um, Far and Away, do you know the Tom Cruise film, Far and Away? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, they were the films out when I was a kid, I guess. And mm-hmm. I still remember, like, the whole day being excited to go, sitting in there, getting some sweets. And mm-hmm. uh, and it's weird. Like, this is something... What what we don't pay notice as enough is that, like, I'm 36 now, and I still look back at that day as, fuck, one of the most amazing days of my childhood. <laughs> Not, uh-huh. And I had a great childhood, but it's, you know, that's, that's yeah. how much things yeah. can mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if they have that. Uh, uh, they probably don't, but uh, movie pass is a, is a, a thing starting to uh, uh, get a buzz here. And it's uh, sort of like what you mentioned, it's nine ninety nine a month and uh, you can use it to go to almost any cinema. Uh, mm. you, you can use it as much as you want at the month, but only once per day. But uh, for $10, I mean, if you see, uh, one movie you save a little bit, but if you see you know two or more movies, you're saving yeah. like a ton of money. And I've yeah, seen no. movies that I normally wouldn't see in the theater. Like I went to see I Tanya, which I probably wouldn't yeah. have seen in the movie, in the theater, and uh, the dar- the darkest hour, and uh, it's just a it's a great experience. Yeah, no, definitely. Like that was the whole thing with this uh, with the Cine World ones back in the day. It it was unlimited, and you could go as many times in that day as you wanted. 
So oh, nice. if I had days off work, well, I would spend, I'd watch three films back to back. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, it didn't matter then because you've got that card. Every single film that came out, I'd watch, and then you'd look like different because it was a chain. So you, mm-hmm. and in London, so you'd have like about twenty of these different cinemas, but different ones would show different films. So then you'd you'd travel from the other side to that that one just <laughs> to get to that cinema to watch a different. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, mm-hmm. amazing. Still one of the only things in life that. But well, that's just loads of things. But there's yeah. still one of the things that just makes me buzz is going going to the cinema and watching the movie. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Mm. That's why I actually get kind of mad sometimes when I see people kind of complain about, uh, like, oh, I hate going to the movies, and I'm like, what? Oh, I mean, that's like fuck the them. <laughs> motherfuckers. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Or... Uh, but then what? Do, what else do they complain about in life? Those bastards. <laughs> eh? Everything. <laughs> and, and just imagine, do you know that person complaining about going to the cinema? That's somebody's girlfriend there. Or boyfriend. Bastards. <laughs> Ruining good times. <laughs> I'm kidding. But yeah, still. Yeah, but, but deadly serious. Yeah, no, uh, completely. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, actually, this, while I'm sitting here actually on my uh, Facebook, it just popped up that Coolidge uh, Corner Theater, which is Coolidge After Midnight. Uh, they just added uh, two events. I gotta go see what they are. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, they're showing Mohawk, the new horror movie. Oh, uh, they're showing American Psycho actually uh, yeah, tomorrow love night. It. Love it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the Slumber Party Massacre, an original thirty-five millimeter on Saturday. Nice. That's pretty- <laughs> nice. Uh, Freddy's so you're, dead. You're... Oh, Freddy's dead. Uh huh. I remember going to see Freddy's Dead in Freddy Vision, and he got the special. Uh, yeah, that, it was. That's funny that we. I was just talking about Freddy 3D two days ago to somebody, where you, mm-hmm. explaining that you had to put him on, and then and it, it tapped the thing, and then you take him off <laughs> and put him on. Yeah, it was a certain point in the movie. Uh, put on your, you know, I forget they called it Freddy Vision. But it was just 3D, but. <laughs> That was uh, when I, I did a film, uh, Cam to Cam, and that was directed by Joel Swazon. And he, uh, he worked he worked a lot with Wes Craven. And I think he, I'm not, I think he did one of the Freddies himself. Um, oh. But uh, yeah, great, great guy. And that was that was always a buzz hearing his stories. Um, mm-hmm. It's great, great, absolute one of the best directors, like nicest people I've ever worked with. Um, I did this. Uh, I was playing a serial killer with uh, Tamin Surisok. She was in in that film. Um, but yeah, understanding directors, what we were talking about earlier. First day, that was one of the first big roles I had, and uh, oh, I was so scared, so scared. And uh, I came in on set, and uh, I told him straight out. I said like, oh, I'm shitting myself. <laughs> and he just straight away like brought me down and was was amazing. Really, really nice guy. Yeah. Joel was on. And uh, uh fuck and he's been around forever. Like he's he's just a uh, real real guy who's been around and seen it all. Yeah, he was producer. I just Googled it. He was producer on yeah, on a lot of films like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. But oh, uh, wow. I'm sorry. Oh, a Nightmare on Elm Street too. Freddy's Revenge. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's a good. That's a good one with uh, oh, Mark Patton. Mm. He is the lead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like I like the original Freddy. Freddy one. I remember watching that. That was an event. Watching the first one, and then yeah. the, like that was the whole thing. How old are you? Uh forty one. Forty one. Yeah. So you'd be the same, like. Uh, when you were crashing around your friends' houses, you had the uh, Freddy's and the night and the Jason. Friday the Thirteenth, and all the, uh, and like all them. So then in the night you'd watch like two or three back to back. That used to be the thing. Yeah, it used to be every Friday the Thirteenth on uh, Channel Thirty Eight. Here they would show, you know, however many there were at the time, like the first four, you know, Friday the Thirteenth or first mm-hmm. three, and you know it was always a. It was a big event because, uh, like I said, you couldn't you couldn't just go and watch these movies anywhere at the time. You'd either have to wait for them to come on TV or 
or maybe and, go at, you know and rent them at the video store. But I tell you something like the original. If you watch the original Friday the Thirteenth, it's fucking that's a scary film, man. Like mm-hmm. for me, once the rest they're good, but that whole thing with the mom and all that. What's her name? Mm-hmm. Bruce. Yeah. the fuck out of me, man. <laughs> yeah. On one of one of our first shows on Without Your Head when we started the show, we had Betsy Palmer on who played um, nice. Uh, and uh you know, rest rest in peace she passed away but uh yeah she was a really cool guest and she like does she didn't really acknowledge the other movies she's just like to her uh jason's dead and, and he died as a kid and he never you know oh did you get to do the voice <laughs> no i wish we did though uh, uh, yeah. that was it uh, that the voice went out mm-hmm. part and that yeah, end think... and it's the end and it was so creepy mm-hmm he jumps out of the water but yeah, the, the, no, the, no, with her, with, with her, her I meant. Oh like, yeah, yeah. Gets head head off and stuff. yeah, yeah. I, I always remember being like, "Fuck." Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that one. I yeah, Friday the Thirteenth one. That was one of the films that always scared me. Yeah, and then the the callback to that in part two, when when he has like the the shrine to her, I always thought yeah. was uh, was the best part of uh, the ones with Jason. I kind of yeah. like it was more of a, a person and not like a zombie. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And I've, as far as Nightmare on Elm Street, I think the I like a lot of sequels, but the first one is by far the best one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Before they get kind of silly. I do think yeah. the last one, so not the remake, but uh, Freddy's, I mean, Jason. Yeah. Do uh, Nightmare, I think that one. Yeah, is, that is one great. was, but it had, uh, what's her name, Nancy back in it, didn't it? Yeah, everyone played themselves, uh, yeah. and it, I thought it was interesting because it, cause it it kind of looked at how people uh, took to Freddy as more of the hero of those movies than the actual hero, and yeah. it, it was an interesting take, you know, how people uh, really just wanted to watch those movies and see the killer kill people. Yeah, no, definitely. To me, it's, it's funny, though, because to me, and this is my own opinion as well, but like... Uh, in, in Who's Watching Oliver, Mama has elements of Freddy to her, where it's like this over-the-top kind of, do you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, even though it's clear that because uh, she interacts with the women, uh, when you're yeah. watching, there's always parts uh, where you're questioning if she's there, if it's, it's in of Oliver's course. mind. Yeah, of yeah. course, of course. Yeah, Which, no, that, and that's that was planned. Like we planned uh, throughout. It's you, you are, you know, what what's going on? Yeah, which I think was uh, a smart way to. It also made sense of story one, storyline wise, how she's in the computer to to watch because and not in the room, mm. but just having her there and not physically there, uh, you know, adds yeah. to that element of you know, is this you know real? And it's just creepy. Like mm-hmm. you got this guy who's like doesn't want to do like it's fucking it's fucking horrible really isn't it like you've got this guy who's poor and like and not innocent but you know what i mean he doesn't want to do this stuff which mm-hmm. he's been somebody on the computer screens telling him to fucking rape and kill people oh it's horrible and then on the screen you've got this little old woman going you fucking yeah just uh oh, terrible mm-hmm. yeah it's uh it definitely, uh, the movie definitely sits with you, and you, you think about it, which I think is a good, uh, good thing for a movie to do. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. No, I, I just, I, I hope people, people enjoy it. Um, yeah, I know it's yeah. not everybody's cup of tea. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, fuck, man. Yeah. yeah. If you, if you like the, if you like the show, you're probably, uh, you'll probably dig it. So. <laughs> Love this show now. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I want to thank you for doing this, and uh, no, much appreciated. You, really appreciate yeah. you inviting me on. Yeah, definitely, and love to do it again sometime. Oh, definitely, man, definitely. Cool. All right. Unless definitely. you get too big for me. But no, yeah, nah, man. I'm I'm a I'm a film fan anyway. You know, yeah, I can tell. Uh, yeah, I just we could sit uh, and talk about film anyway. It doesn't yeah. have to be about the film. I come on and just chat about a movie sometime. <laughs> All right, that'd be good. The guest co-host, great sometime. man. That'd be fun. Yeah. Nice, great. Cool. Have a have a great day and much appreciated, brother. Thanks, man. You too. This is Betsy Palmer, and I'm not sorry that I lost my head. 
It's been worth every moment of 